Coming up today, we're harvesting onions, and we've learned a lesson about how we planted them and what method worked best and what we're going to change for next and year. And our tomato beds in hopes of not having to deal with the tomato hornworm next year. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden. Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored in part by for all your non-GMO organic and heirloom vegetable flowers and herb seeds visit dollarseed.com Sioux Growing Supply located in Wausau Wisconsin focusing on certified leaf compost an excellent amendment for poor soil retains moisture and adds nutrients which equals less water available in labor saver pre-filled trays and pots, bag and bulk. Visit SueCompost.com. Organic fertilizer for the health conscious organic home gardener. Family owned and operated. Visit WGardens.com. Don't poison your soil with municipal water. Attach a body, mind and soil hose filter. Free shipping exclusively through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Just click on the body, mind and soil icon. Authentic Haven brand, soil conditioner for the home gardener. Easy to brew. Visit ManureTea.com. No measuring, no thinking. Stamp it, plant it, stop plotting, start planting. Gardenstamp.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We're up in our front yard garden today where we're going to harvest onions. And these onions we've let go and we didn't harvest them early so we could cure them. We basically allowed them to cure in the ground. Now we've got a couple different varieties here, some that we started from seed and others that we bought from starts or the, the green pencil diameter shaped onions that you'd buy at your local home and garden center. Now there was a couple of issues that we faced in this particular bed. One is these, this was cilantro here that naturally seeded from last year. We also had an overwhelming amount of dill that we fought and have fought, fought with in this front yard garden for a number of years because we started some in containers about four years ago and it continued to spread. So we didn't weed those herbs out. We let them grow in conjunction with our onions and our leeks. And that did not work well at all. The leeks and the onions got shaded out by the overwhelming amount of cilantro and dill. So that's mistake number one. If you're going to try to grow something and basically companion plant, you want to have adequate sunlight for the main crop that you're growing, which would have been our onions here. Secondly, the larger bulb onions, such as this, now that's something you'd buy at the store or the farmer's market. That's, that's tennis ball size. That's very, very pleasing. If we had 300 of those, I'd say it was a good crop. The difference here is we've got some very small ones and we've got some very large ones. Here's, here's what happened. The very large ones are from the starts that we purchased from our local home and garden center. The starts were about the size of your, the diameter of your finger. You know, they're green and they're about four or five inches long and you get uh, 50 of them for about two or three dollars. Those we planted and they did very well. The ones that did not do well was from the seeds that we started indoors in our little nine ounce clear plastic cups. Now it wasn't the seeds and it wasn't the soil that was the issue. It was the issue that we planted far too many of the onion seeds per cup. They overcrowded themselves and when we went to plant them out here in the garden or in the other garden, there was not, they were not mature enough to be planted and they died off very quickly or those that did survive were very stunted as you see with bulbs such as this. So what we're going to do is we're going to harvest all of these onions and we're going to take them inside and allow them to dry, let the dirt dry on them, and we can store them. So what we have learned and what we are going to practice different next year is, one, avoid buying starts altogether from the local home and garden center. And two, as we plant the seeds in, in January when we start them, only put about five or six in each solo red cup or blue cup or nine ounce cup or whatever you're going to put them in or wherever we're putting them in to give each seed adequate space to bulk up before we put them in the ground 
so we don't face this issue again next year. We know that we're capable of growing, the soil is capable of growing good sized onions. We just as gardeners need to understand and practice the and patience of maximizing the amount of seeds in each cup or each container we're starting so they can bulk up before we put them in the garden. So I'm going to harvest these. Now there's a couple here that are still green and they're not going to grow anymore obviously because we're getting into the very colder portions of fall and I've got to get this bed cleaned out so I can get some garlic in this uh, front yard garden bed. So we're just going to go ahead and extract everything out and that's some of the deal that I spoke about. Uh, we've got two half gallon mason jars uh, full of dill seed, clean dill seed that we've harvested over the last two years. So I'm just going to get all this cleaned up, harvested, and understanding what we've done wrong this year and hoping that uh, you don't make the same mistake as we have and changing our practices in planting so we can have a better crop, more successful crop from seeds, which is the best way to grow onions rather than from starts. This is a radish plant that we allowed to go to seed. Now what happens is you've got all these little pods that at, at the stage of green you can eat, they taste like radishes, or you can let them dry as we have. And you can see that's the old bulb, there's some uh, gnarly looking root growth on there. But we, what you can do is, one, you can take these inside and break these up, and inside of them you will have anywhere from, well there's about five seeds. And six, or what you can do is you can take and directly sow them into the ground for fall harvest. Now, we're just going to make a couple of rows here. And you just take, and it's real simple, from pod to ground, you can have another round of radishes. Now, not all of these are dry. You can see some of these have some very... Uh, green and pink pigmentation. You can go through here and you'll know uh, just by the, the touch of it whether or not they're ready. So you can just go through here and pull the ones off that are ready. You can take this inside in the basement or uh, shed or whatever, let dry fully and then you can go in and extract all these seeds and use them for next spring's planting. Blanching is really simple. Many people don't realize necessarily what blanching is. But I'll show you. What you do is you take your vegetables and some people call this parboiling. So what you do is you simply just take your vegetables, you're going to put them in boiling water. Then each vegetable usually has a time for how long it should be blanched for or parboiled for. Um, in this case, these greens here, these kale greens, are two minutes. So once you're done with them in the water for the two minutes, then you're simply just going to go ahead and you're going to put them into an ice bath to stop the cooking process. So that's simply what blanching is. All right, so we're on the upper high end here of the large garden. It's starting to get cold. It's the beginning stages of fall. So we're going to do two different types of uh, harvesting of tomatoes. We want to get tomatoes to harvest, uh, ripen as long into the fall as we possibly can. We've uh, actually harvested tomatoes as late as the first week in November before. Well, they're calling for some cold temperatures. So here's what we have decided to do. We've got the Florida weave here. We're going to harvest all of these tomatoes. Green ones, ripe ones, it doesn't matter. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and pull this bed up and, and loosen the soil with our, our uh, garden fork and our shovel and spade it under. Now, we fought with the tomato hornworm and some of you may have also fought with that very issue of them coming in and eradicating tomatoes upon tomatoes. And we had this in every single bed here at the large garden. So by the, study, by the research that we have done and the studies that have been performed, if you go ahead and till your soil, which we don't recommend tilling, we're talking about loosening with a shovel or fork, in the fall and then in the spring, this will greatly reduce by 90% of a chance that you will not experience hornworms again. Because hornworms lay their larvae in the soil at the end of the season and it stays there dormancy over the winter months and then it'll come back. In this, it'll emerge out of the soil, turn into the worm and the moth and the whole deal, and you've got no tomatoes again. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and take this bed out, work the soil now, come back in in the spring, work it again to greatly reduce the possibility of having that tomato hornworm in our tomato patch again. 
This also brings up another important point about crop rotation. If you are on a larger scale like we are here, rotating the crops around, moving this particular tomato bed four or five or six beds down, raised berms down, or 30 feet the other way, can greatly enhance the chances you're not going to experience the tomato hornworm also. Now, if you're on a small scale, this can be a difficult task if you're growing in containers or raised beds and you're very small. Try to just throw on the opposite side of the raised bed or you know, empty the container soil out, bring fresh new soil in for that container, and that should really reduce the chances of experiencing the tomato hornworm. Tomato hornworm also will eat your peppers as well, so you want to keep that in mind if you're going to put peppers in this bed and you've experienced that problem last year. Now, as we spoke about on a previous episode, you can bring these green tomatoes indoors and get them to ripen like we are. You just want to keep a couple things in mind. 55 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, not on a windowsill. You want to keep it in a nice warm room, but not in direct sunlight because the skins will be very, very tough. Because once you harvest them, obviously the sugars and the nutrients quit going to the fruit, but it will ripen over a week to two week period. You can wrap them in a newspaper, put them in a paper sack, and they'll naturally release a gas that happens in nature where they can ripen uh, by themselves. So you can ripen them indoors. Obviously, it's best if you ripen them on the vine, but that can be done. Thanks for watching. Join us again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird, and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.